Why are you still afraid? That's the question today. We're going to talk about fears, rational and irrational. It's a perfect time of year to talk about it. Halloween is just around the corner. And we are all inundated with horror movies, scary images all around our cities. Uh, from cutesy blow-ups on the lawns to... Uh, different images on our social medias. And so today is a great day to talk about these fears, what they really are, how we can wield control over them, and where they're really coming from. And I'm going to get deep into some spirituality today, deep into some understanding of who we are and why fears arise in us, especially this time of year. Uh, And if you've never joined the Cub Cooker Supernatural Podcast. Welcome, by the way. Uh, we are an incredible community here. We're over a quarter million strong now uh, of our numbers and our followers all across the world. We have people literally in every corner of the world that are seeking the authentic reality and a deeper understanding of who they are and what the world is that we live in. And we do that through looking at faith, spirituality, and the paranormal. So uh, paranormal being those things outside of the normal, ghosts, apparitions, extraterrestrials, UFOs, all of the weirdness. Uh, But again, we also look at that in light of healthy spirituality uh, and then that faith that uh, is inherent to all of us. We want to believe in something. We want to know that there's more out there. Um, And I look at all of that through biblical texts as as well as other spiritual texts. So... I don't care who you are, um, what color your skin is, who you're married to, where you do or don't go to church. You are welcome here. This is an all-inclusive community uh, where we can have open conversations about these concepts uh, without fear of judgment. So as long as you're here uh, with a good attitude, uh, with love and light and seeking unity with others, that's why we're here. So what is up, Lynn? Good morning. Dannon, welcome. How are you doing? Hope you're having a beautiful, beautiful morning or afternoon where you're at. Um, uh, Martina says, love you, dude. Thank you so much. Um, Appreciate you guys. Uh, I love this concept and community. Krista says, thank you for being here, Krista. Um, Getting into it today, let's look at the three types of fears. Now, what I'm going to give you guys today is some actionable things that you can do. You can, you know. Wrap them up, put them in your pocket, take them home, and start taking action in your life against fear. Uh, Because fear is something that often, when we're going to bed at night and we have those panicky feelings, um, it's something that can really overwhelm us. We can feel uneasy a lot. Now, let me disclaim this. This is not mental health advice at all. So do not take it that way. You guys know what to do. You know you best. And I'm not here to replace any advice from your healthcare professionals. What I'm here to do is help you on a spiritual level understand what's going on. So do with that what you will, but just know that that this is not advice in the sense of advice on uh, the mental health issues. I'm talking about for me, I know me well enough to know that I don't personally need to go and get any type of prescription for the issues that I struggle with. I know that they're inherently spiritual and that's how I work on me. So again, you do you. And I have to say that unfortunately because of the world we live in, but just know that where I'm coming from this morning, I want to give you actionable things. And there are some people out there that need to go find more professional help with what they're dealing with. There's some people that What I'm saying today will resonate deeply and it will unlock some things in you and allow you to step into a brighter future, a brighter point of your life. Um, And that's exactly why I'm here because I'm here to help myself. And by helping myself, I help this community. By helping this community, I help your communities. Uh, And it's this, this amazing ripple effect. So I show up because I'm inspired because I'm dealing with something in my life. Last night, I was tortured with weird, weird dreams all night just irrational, fearful dreams, weird stuff going on, jumping timelines back and forth. The moon has been huge lately. 
I walked outside this morning and I can see it. It's just like an anchor up in the sky and you can feel that energy from it. Krista says, me too. Yes, absolutely. Good morning from Missouri. What is up, Jerry? Welcome. Uh, Christina says, I'm a retired pastor's daughter. Uh, I have a lot of knowledge on the Bible. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Yes, and that's that's kind of my background. I come from a very biblically based household um, and community. I live in West Texas, so right in the middle of the Bible Belt. I have a very deep knowledge of the Bible and all of the um, more of the esoteric understanding of the Bible, and that's kind of how I look at this. I also have the Bhagavad Gita here, which we're going to read from today because it's going to help you guys. I I find stuff that helps us. I don't hold one text uh, necessarily above another because I'm finding a lot of value in a lot of different texts. And that comes, that that's a hard thing for me to do because that comes from 30 plus years of indoctrination into the Bible is the only word of God. And when I finally discovered the last couple of years that I am the word of God, you are the word of God. The word of God is anyone that expresses divinity Uh, has the divine expression, the logos of God, that starts to change the paradigm. That starts to change the paradigm. So like I said, what I'm, what I'm going to share today, uh, hopefully I pray that it will unlock something in you. And I pray that it helps someone find a deeper level of wellness in their life. And I pray that it helps me too. Uh, I've been questioning what is this fear? Why is it that every year we go through October and we inundate ourselves with fear and then we immediately switch to thankfulness and then we immediately switch to festivities then we immediately shift to a new year and all of these resolutions talk about a mind you can insert the word there a mind blank in what world does that sound healthy does that sound logical within four months to go from fear and torment to thankfulness to celebrations to now all of a sudden renewal and let's figure everything out for this new year and I'm going to do this and I'm going to lose, you know, 20 pounds, you know, before February and all of this stuff. Uh, Miss says Halloween is rooted in evil practices and rituals. So is every other holiday, every other holiday. And that's what I'm talking about today, guys. If you think that it's just Halloween, then you've been deceived too. And I have too. Go look up and we won't talk about this now. I'm going to talk about it more towards Christmas, but Saturnalia, uh, all of the ancient rituals around that. Look up what like Thanksgiving really is and the nature of what that really was. We've been told this nice little fairy tale about it. I'm sorry, guys. But we have the blinders on. Uh, Mandy Faye says, this world has always felt so off for me. I've always felt alienated. Absolutely. Absolutely. Me too. And I'm, I'm very, um, I'm a very intrinsic person. And I say intrinsic because um, I kind of have a side that's extroverted and a side that's introverted. So I can go out and be with people and I can be the life of the party. But then when I, I need like a day of rest from that, if that makes sense. You know, even if I meet a friend or an acquaintance for coffee, you know, I have to like have all this output and then I have to like chill out from that. Uh, and and thank God this is the only place I don't have to like renew from like you guys. It's weird that I'm like made for this. Uh, I've been training for this thing my whole life. All of my fears and failures have led to this. And you guys have something like that in your life too. And so the the three types of fear, because what we're going to do is we're going to call them out. We're going to target them and we're going to start extinguishing them right now today. Three types of fear. Rational fear. Rational fears occur when there is a real or imminent threat. These can be good things. A mountain lion running at you, you don't want to just go to that place of peace inside you and go all zen. You're going to get eaten alive, right? Like that's a healthy fear, right? 
uh, you need that boom, that moment of I'm going to jump out of the way. I'm going to tackle the mountain lion. I'm going to climb the tree. Well, you don't want to climb a tree with a mountain lion, but you need, you need that fight or flight mechanism. That is a fear that leads to a reaction. However, there are other fears. There's a primal fear. Primal fear, uh, is defined as the innate fear that is programmed into our brains. That's coming from rational fears. Rational fears, again, you're in the woods and there's a bear. That bear is protecting her cubs. That bear comes at you. You need some rational fear to think quickly and take action that your normal mind would not take. But here's the problem. You're walking on the streets in New York City and all of a sudden that same feeling kicks in. And then you start to panic because you don't know, as I hit the microphone, you don't know, you don't know what's going on and your brain's firing all these chemicals off and it's like, whoa, okay, what's going on here? That's that primal fear, that reactive mind. Scientology calls it the reactive mind. And I'm not here to teach Scientology, but I've studied Scientology. I'm studying uh, Indian philosophy. I've studied uh, a lot of Native American belief systems because I live here in West Texas. I've studied the Bible my entire life. I'm here to bring you guys a world, a world of spiritual faith and paranormal understanding and try to start to put a bigger picture together here for those of us that are open-minded, and that is this community. Mandy Faye says, yes, my interest uh, from genetics and paleon paleoanthropology. Oh, paleoanthropology. Sorry, my bad. Uh, paleoanthropology to magic and religion it all makes sense now yes absolutely absolutely and so that's you know all of this stuff fits together um and i i think it's <laughs> the old saying jack of all trades master of none right okay so we know that that's programmed in here you guys can say that saying back to me i can say it to you but do you know what it actually set, goes on to say no because nobody finishes the thought the thought is, and the actual quote is, jack of all trades, master of none, is sometimes better than a master of one. That's a narrative flip. No, we just trimmed that quote to serve the idea that you better darn well go and get a degree in dot, 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 or you're not going to survive. Pretty wild, huh? Well, what does all this have to do with fear? Because fear is programming. Your brain is a computer that that can think and come up with ideas, but it's it's not really the ideas that are coming from the folds in your brain. They're downloading from a universal intelligence. They are starting to understand, they, the they, they are starting to understand that the mind is more than the brain. The mind is actually... There literally you can hold memories in different parts of your body, which is why, uh, like if you, uh, say you're walking and you smell popcorn and all of a sudden your hand starts hurting. Well, maybe when you were a kid, uh, you know, you burned your hand on a popcorn, uh, maker, you know, and you don't really remember it, but all of a sudden, like you get that sensation because you have memories throughout your entire biological body. But also that biological body is an energy antenna made to communicate with the universal intelligence. Why does King Solomon say there's nothing new under the sun? Because there's not. Because that intelligence is only being downloaded through humanity and creating into humanity depending on what intelligence you align, your, you align yourself with. Consciousness is 100% non-local. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, prove it. Well, guys, I can't prove it, but the more you study it and the more you study Eastern philosophy, the more you understand and you can practice this and you start to experience it. Therefore, you don't need physical proof because the proof is in what? The pudding. The sphere of what religion has uh, if you don't obey. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what we're talking about today, too. I mean, you know, fear goes way beyond. Hey, get out of the plant. Sorry, my dog's in the plant again. Um, Marvell. Marvell. Okay. She's good now. She has her toys in here. 
and the other babies are in the rest of the house now, so we thought it would be more zen today if we put her in here with me. And the third type of fear is an irrational fear, and this is one that we all, all struggle with, guys. Irrational fears are the ones that don't make logical sense and can vary greatly from person to person. So what is an irrational fear for you? In a, hold on just a second. We'll pause this. your squirrel okay sorry guys um she's still a puppy so she'll be out of puppy phase soon um so irrational fears you know um how many of us have them i mean it's everything from the monster under the bed to uh what if i have this disease to uh what if my significant other to what if there's not enough to what if the world uh, all of these things, all of these things, guys. So, uh, so, uh, Lynn says my old Bible shows words in the revision changed to absolute opposite meaning. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And so that's really what I'm talking about today, guys, is programming, programming. How do we program ourselves? How do we deprogram from what we've been programmed into and reprogram into what we need to be programmed into? And this is a controversial subject because um, if you believe in matrix theory, which is everything around us, all of the physical matrix is all uh, kind of this finite thing. And that finite thing uh, eventually, you know, just leads us to what the grave and we either have to do it all over again or we just go to dust into the earth. Right. And so you have all these really macabre representations of the afterlife um and so there is one common denominator amongst everyone who has what's called an nde uh, a near unaliving experience where they they get to see part of the other side um and there is there's nothing but love and light and acceptance uh and, and this realization that all the fear bs that we live in in this world is nothing but programming and programming the computer system and our brains and our bodies and our reactions to not correctly communicate with the universal intelligence the one that is love and light and you have a lot of ascended masters from krishna to buddha to christ who i grew up with i was i was taught to have jesus as my lord and savior and the more I study the words of him, I am taught to become him. I'm taught to become him, and, and so are you. Well, that's blasphemous. Well, go and read the red letters in your Bibles, and don't read anything else. Just read the red letters and look at the actual esoteric teaching of Christ. And then you start to understand that everything else around that is man's interpretation of those teachings or of the old religious laws in the old testament and you start to understand that jesus was really a man out of time he was not from around here he came from either um either the stars or the ethos or he woke up and realized he was god um or he was sent directly by the father as the fullness incarnate as a man on this earth. So whatever you believe around that, I certainly think he's someone we should pay attention to, to better understand who we are and what our relationship is to the father. Jacob says, bless you all in Jesus name. Thank you, Jacob. I appreciate that. Welcome my friend. So one of the things I want to read right now about fear, cause this is going to really lead into what I'm talking about today. And this is from the uh, Bhagavad Gita, which is, I'm starting to discover, is absolutely beautiful. 
Um, and this is in chapter 2, verse 41 through 42. It says, those who follow this path, resolving deep within themselves to seek me alone, attain singleness of purpose. For those who lack resolution, the decisions of life are many branched and endless. And that is, that is wild guys. Like that is such a a biblical message from what I was raised with. Like those who seek the father alone attain singleness of purpose. But if you lack resolution, what you can't ride two horses, you can't serve two masters. That's a biblical idea. If you lack resolution, the decisions of your life are many branched and endless. And so what could that lead to? That could lead to a lot of fear. If your if your life looks like this tangled mess of vines and I'm going to make this decision and this is fear based and this is, um, and then today I'm going to do things love based, but tomorrow I'm going to act on fear because I'm afraid of the bank account. I'm afraid that my husband will, I'm afraid that my wife or my girlfriend, or what if I don't find love? What if I don't, what if I'm going to be alone for it? You got all of this stuff. And what does that lead to? Many branched and endless decisions. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of making decisions in my life and I'm ready for my life to start becoming what that idea of that straight and narrow. Does that mean everything will be perfect? No, but I'm tired of making all of these decisions day in and day out and all of these things based on fear one day and love the next day. And so what does that mean? If we have, uh, if we have this many branched endless decisions to make, MKJ, uh, MJK says, now look at America beginning to end. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, what do you think about the theory of pre atomism? Uh, that means basically a pre adamic civilization. If you go back and watch my theory videos on is Yahweh the father that Christ talked about, which I propose that no, he's not. Um, if you go back and look at that and hear how I read Genesis one and Genesis two, then you'll start to understand that. Yeah, I think there was definitely a pre adamic civilization. I think that the energy of the universe, that light beings were created, that we were one with the father. Uh, we were co-creators. We were made in the image. We were given uh, creation upon this planet, probably an upgraded version genetically of what we experience now. I think the fall of man actually happened in Genesis 2 when Yahweh Elohim came in and made Adam out of clay. To me, that sounds like, not just sounds like, but all the research I've done of uh, ancient Sumerian and Egyptian mythologies and starting to really understand who El Elyon is versus the sons of El Elyon, the fallen angels. Uh, You start to really look at a whole different narrative and understand that we were potentially downgraded or de-evolved to be um, worker bees for these gods, these fallen angels, and that the Garden of Eden was the perfect prison for us and that the serpent was actually representative of Christ coming into the garden to return knowledge or gnosis to people. Uh, and then, and he's saying, you know, you'll be like that God. You'll be like Yahweh Elohim if you have this knowledge. Um, uh, and that ever since then, Christ has been entering the matrix from, from that point to, uh, being there in Adam and imprisoned in Adam. And this is a very Gnostic idea. If you read the secret book of John, uh, Yaldabaoth is this character, this, this false maker, if you will, that makes a matrix out of the divine creation. And in fact, makes it out of pieces of God and trapping the purity and the innocence and the beauty of God in all of these physical creations. So it's pretty beautiful. Uh, pretty beautiful when you, when you open up those mythologies about it. My son said the same thing about de-evolving. Oh dude, that's awesome, Mandy. That's awesome. So yeah, I I mean, I don't know if there's something to that, but I know that, um, I do believe that our original creation by a loving father, creator, the mother, the father, the mother, and the son, the Godhead, the Elohim, the plural, the triune God, um, or source, I believe that we've just been trapped in these 
these biological systems and now technological to keep us in a fear-based mentality so that every decision we make serves into what the beast system if you are familiar at all with revelation the whole theory is revelations unfolding right now it's coming guys revelation has been fulfilling that prophecy ever since it was written and probably from before when it was written because there's nothing new under the sun i believe prophecy is cyclical and time is a massive loop and we're just on this merry-go-round until we actually get off of it and i'm not talking about uh physical physically leaving this planet i think that's a big misconception people oh it sucks here i'm ready to get off like you know i'm ready to uh go on to a better place guys heaven is here now you have to access it now how can you ever hope to be there in the end if you don't access the kingdom within now and transcend the fear now uh mjk says lol we are on the same frequency brother much respect thank you very much i appreciate that lynn says agreed thank you lynn i appreciate that um and then uh let's see is earth uh, a prison planet alien sapien says uh that's one theory again I, I share a lot of theories on here because i can't none of this spirituality stuff can be proven and so that's why this channel is largely uh speculative it's it's all theory it is uh, exploration of different mythologies through faith, spirituality, and the paranormal. And so, um, you know, as I go day to day to day, I start to experience different things in my route in my reality that corroborate the ideas that we talk about on here. And that's what helps evolve my ideas. Is like if I'm experiencing this, and then we're going to propose this, and we're going to test it. And so I use a lot of that scientific method of you know, propose the theory and then I test it in my own life. I bring it, the results back to you guys. That's, I mean, where we're at right now in the podcast is a result of that from day one, exploring these ideas with an open mind. So, uh, let's see. I have one and a new one for you to think about, uh, the house of dragons. What's up? How are you doing? Yeah. Drop, drop your comment down below there. Um, Let's see. I heard that the Old Testament God sent his people to take down the Nephilim tribes. Uh, yeah, I think the old the old God of the Old Testament was definitely like a warrior God. They call him the dragon. Um, he's described as a dragon with a long snout, fire spewing forth, smoke. He always descended on the mountain like that. Uh, what would they have called a dragon? They would have called a dragon uh, a, an incredible spaceship. I mean, think about you know, all these sci-fi movies that we have and when people are afraid and running and it's coming down and it's creating dust and smoke and, you know, down. Think about this long, long spaceship uh, that's literally breathing fire and smoke and has, you know, the elongated snout on it and looks like these dragons that people had in their mythologies. And so, um, you know, that's that Yaldabaoth or Yahweh of the Old Testament. What's the perfect deception? The perfect deception, if you're Satan, is to make yourself God. And the Bible even says that Satan is the God of this world. And then you have Yahweh talking about how he is above all and how he will, you know, uh, gather the peoples of the earth and everyone will bow down. And like, you know, you have all this stuff, yet you have Christ come and you have this father figure that he talks about who comes in love and light and oneness and true blessings, esoteric blessings, transcendence. What's the biggest blessing in the world, guys? Like, what's the biggest blessing that could happen to you today? New car, new house, finally meet your soulmate. What is that for you? And then you have a guy named, named Christ. He's not even named that, but, but he is the Christ. Um, Yeshua is actually what he would have been called. Um, you have him come and he's saying, Hey, the kingdom of God is within you. You're looking for this thing coming on the outside and I'm here to tell you it's within you. And so the activation for today, guys, for today is recognize rational fear, primal fear and irrational fear. And I'm going to redefine those again. Rational fear occur when there is a real or imminent threat. That's a fear. You don't want to lose that one. That's survival. 
primal fear is that thing that that survival fear has programmed into you and the beast system, which again, I believe has been here since the beginning, since the beginning, you already can't buy, sell, or trade anything without buying into the beast system. But you can transcend that through these spiritual practices that Christ brought us or Buddha or Krishna or, you know, whoever you're, your guru is, I mean, for me, it's Christ. And I look at all of the ones around him and I see super similarities between all of them. But that primal fear, understanding that that primal fear is programmed through your entire body. And it takes more than a one day affirmation to deprogram from that. That's the common misconception with all this spirituality is that all of a sudden you wake up and the world is rainbows and kittens and guys, the work it has taken, if you're, you're my age, 36 years old, I've got a deep program from at least 30 years, at least 30 years of programming. Does it take 30 years? Maybe. Or does it take 30 years worth of effort and work and acceptance that I've been programmed? Yeah. Habit forming. Absolutely. Takes assistance and time. Candace says, absolutely. Uh, yes, Norse and Egyptian, Greek, Greek, Roman, Hindi, all of them. Yes, absolutely. So, um, the house of the dragon says, I believe that I am uh, a being and a beast of pure light and darkness. I myself will become the twin. Uh, Jesus is my twin brother. I am an antichrist, but I am and what to come out of. So House of the Dragons, I don't understand that. I understand duality somewhat from uh, Gnosticism. Uh, but I also, I'm more of a transcend the flesh kind of guy uh, with where I am on my on my walk right now. So, um, and I think there's been many, many antichrists, which is the antithesis of what Christ taught or the Buddha or Krishna. Um, okay. I, I see what you're saying house of the dragons, but do be careful with that philosophy because that can lead you into some really dark places. So, uh, the idea of duality that like evil can become good, good, good can become evil and that it's all okay because of, uh, that that's kind of a dangerous thought mainly because it can mentally lead you into some dark places and cause you to make decisions that are not really healthy for you or those around you. So do be careful with that. You know, you can't go wrong in my experience, seeking the highest vibration of love and light. Um, you know, understanding that yes, the world has darkness in it. Yes. Uh, we all have that capability within us for sure. But for me, the ascended masters are all about following and finding that highest light within us. So to me, you know, house of the dragons, no, like all respect to you, brother, what you're doing, but please, please be careful with that mentality. And for all of us guys, cause that, that, that plays into what I'm talking about with the fear here, you know, philosophies are great, but they can lead us right back around to fear. And so I don't really like to teach philosophies on here other than, love and light. Um, Mandy face says our light and dark were separate until we fell into duality, both inhabiting the same body. Yeah, absolutely. Mandy. Absolutely. And maybe that's what you're trying to say. Uh, house of dragons. And that's totally like, I understand that theology. I definitely do. But again, um, be careful with that. Be careful because, uh, that which we feed grows, that which we feed grows. So feed the light, feed the light, feed love, you know, service to your neighbor, service to your friends, time spent creating. Those are all aspects of the father. And when you feed those, that's, that's another problem with duality because duality corroborates the bloodthirsty God of the old Testament rather than transcends it. And if you look at the message of Christ, it transcended those actions and deeds. And if you look at the idea of Yahweh taking Israel as a portion and Israel being a representation of humanity, 
And now you have the God of the world taking us, our flesh as his portion and all of those sacrifices. That's how you end up with a lot of these weird societies and everything. And again, respect to everyone, but I'm just saying, go where the fruit is. And I don't find fruit in the shadow work. There's a lot of people that are into that, which is hard to tell from my background. I get that. I, I, I do this to talk about, you know, the ghosts, the fear, the things in the unknown, that type of thing. Uh, was Melchizedek like Jesus? I think Melchizedek maybe even was Jesus. Uh, and if you look at the line of uh, the the magic line that, that Christ actually came from, it's really, really powerful. Uh, and I've done a lot on, I did a great episode on magic versus sorcery, talked about Melchizedek to Christ, Adam, Noah, all of these different beings um, that I think are a reminder and a representation of what we were originally created to be, the original creation. Uh, those that wield frequencies within them and can create seemingly magically out of nothing because we are in the image of the father and the mother because we are all the sons and daughters of the Most High. That, again, is a problem with the whole shadow work thing. And, again, respect to you if you do it. I don't understand it, so I'm probably speaking from a place of ignorance, but I have watched the fruit, personally watched the fruit of people that have interacted with that type of stuff, and it's not always a good thing. It's not always... I'm not saying everything has to be fun, but I'm just saying I've watched it really lead people into some deep places and depressions and stuff that they can't get out of, so feeding the light where where there's light there can be no darkness the light extinguishes the shadows right so to me that's what i do on this channel i'm a light worker okay not a shadow worker and so that's again there's plenty of other channels out there that understand all of that but for me the light there's no darkness in the light so that's what i seek here and that's what i teach here um Let's see. Prayer and fasting. Yes, absolutely. Um, Alien Sapin says, I'm looking for my soul contract. I'm, I, I've already contracted to uh, Christ, to the Christ energy, the Christ consciousness. So uh, I'm done on that. Um, let's see. Do you think facing our fears is still a part of shadow work? Uh, shadow part of self is part of selves. Uh, Coloso, um, you know, that's the theory. But again, um, face, you know, forgiving ourselves is one thing and forgiving others is one thing. That's a Christ-like thing to do. And I'm not talking about the Christian Christ here. I'm talking about the the light being. I'm talking about the, the one. Um that is y'all are getting some deep stuff this morning. This is good. Um, facing fears is different than corroborating those fears or like going into them and experiencing them deeply. That's the problem with that. I have with the shadow work movement is when you're going in and you're like fully feeling and you're like, you know, people are screaming and crying and, it's it's like if you look at it, it's it's just some de demonic stuff, and I and I say that not again as as a Bible Belt person here. I say that as look at the fruit. There's people in this community you can see the fruit of God in their life, the fruit of the kingdom. It's ripe, it's healthy, and it doesn't mean that the past was perfect. It doesn't mean the future is going to be perfect, but it means that that frequency has been found and that frequency is going to be fed every day. And the, that service to our fellow man is going to be continued. We're going to continue to love ourselves, forgive ourselves, love our neighbor, forgive our neighbor and create a beautiful reality because that's inherently our true nature as sons and daughters of the most high God. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, Steffi says to forgiveness was really hard thing to do when I was learning to let go. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's why like that forgiveness leads you into that light and the shadow work leads you deeper into darkness. And, and I know there's people that will argue with me and say, no, I've had great experiences with it and I wouldn't be where I am without it. And that's fine. Like I'm not telling you, but I'm telling you it is not my 
MO on this channel to tell anyone to dig deeper into that darkness because you'll find more. I mean, seek and you will find. That's not just talking about the light. That's talking about you'll find more darkness. You'll find more uh, restrictions on your life. You'll find more limitations. You'll find more fear. Seek and you'll find. And I'm seeking the light. I'm seeking the highest vibration. I'm seeking service to others. I'm seeking unity in this community. And I'm seeking people that embody Christ. Buddha. Krishna. Whatever you want to call him. The one. The unity. The love. The, the thing that we were supposed to be in the first place. And you have other parts of creation that come in and make us into something we're not. Uh, K uh, Coloso says surrendering. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Jacob says Jesus taught to love all. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, big nerd says I serve the Norse gods thoughts. All they're all the same gods. They're all the same gods. The Norse gods are the same gods as the Egyptian as the Sumerian as, uh, the, um, you've got all different pantheons like, and they're all super similar guys. They're all from extraterrestrial races in my understanding, my opinion, my research. Um, they're all created beings, higher beings than us, but they're all created by the source, by the unity of the love of the father, the divine mother, and the, the son, the product of that son. That's the only way that anything could even be made. And so you have these beings that were created anyway that are starting to do make their maker ships and their peoples and their portions um and 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 that's based on the mythologies of the bible and other texts like uh, trying to put all this together you look at enochian theology with enoch all of that stuff works together all of that stuff works together so big nerd says i don't know about all that i'd say they're separate entities with different origins uh the pantheons well if you look at like uh, all of the godheads like in those pantheons and look at the characteristics of them, they're all super similar. So how do you have people thousands of miles apart that have almost identical gods, you know, or at least the parts of that pantheon? Now, I understand there's some faith traditions that actually have millions of gods versus, uh, you know, the the 70, basically. Uh, but again, and I'm not an expert on all that, but I'm just saying these are all entities that have been around for a long time that are manifesting with their peoples on the earth that came and brought technology in the early days, got humanity going. Um, and, and a lot of times tried to help humanity. You can look at some of them, tried to help some of them, tried to hinder and, uh, harness that energy for their own good. So there's a lot of theories around that and I won't get into all of that, but I'm just saying, you know, whoever you serve, make sure it's the one, you know, is it the one? I mean, why, why would you serve created beings when you can serve the uncreated, the one that was here in the beginning, the, the beginning and the end, the alpha and the omega. I mean, to me, I want to serve that eternal father. I want to be a part of that energy collective, that spirit collective, the divine father, the divine mother, and the logos. I want to be in the body of the logos so I can then be a part of creating the beings this next time around. I can now be a part of making creation or creating creation. Big nerd says, I see where your theory is coming from though. Cool. Yeah, that's again, it's, these are all theories like we can't like we can't go in and uh um we can't go in and prove any of this but it's certainly certainly worth talking about so um so anyway yeah um fancy pants says yes amen uh the one is all collective consciousness or l jacob says amen amen absolutely that's why i serve l elion god most high i don't want there to be any miscon misconstruing or misconstruction that's a great word for it too if you misconstrue something you're going to misconstruct from it and you're going to build a life that's based on fear based on taking actions based out of there's not enough 
I can't, well, what if? Fear is not even real, guys. Like, fear is a chemical reaction in our body that we turn into an emotional reaction that we let affect us, affect us spiritually. So, anyway, I hope you guys are picking up what I'm talking about today. I say that every time because we get into some deep stuff. This podcast is not like this linear experiment. It's kind of this multifaceted, you know, we, we have this cyclical movement that we go through. I try to take questions. This is about community and not just me pontificating a message. But I want to end with John fourteen twenty seven. I like to end with biblical text because it's what I know the best. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives you, do I give you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. And why is this important, guys? Because with this, we're told that, hey, through that Christ energy, through that truth, We are left with peace, not as the world tries to give us peace and all of the stuff and all the symbolism and all that. Well, if you do this, things will get back to normal. There's always going to be wars and rumors of wars, right? But that peace is transcendent. And so as this is a great example, as we had this, this discussion today about light work and shadow work. You follow the Christ, you're following the light work. I don't know about all that shadow work because I don't do it. I don't touch it. What I touch is is try to forgive myself and forgive others and activate the law of love, activate the frequency of love, the highest vibration. That highest vibration can literally create light. If thine eye be single, the whole body is full of light. The kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God does not come with visible signs. If thine eye be full of darkness, how deep is that darkness in you? Amen. Marvell flopping her ears back here. Good point, Lynn. Uh, Wars and rumors of wars within, question mark. Absolutely. So stop giving yourself reasons to have wars and rumors of wars within yourself. So great, great examples today, guys. You know, are we going to feed the darkness? Are we going to feed the light? That's your choice. So whatever you do with today's message in your life is going to lead you to wherever that is. Those of you that want to participate in shadow work, I'm sorry, I don't want to live in the darkness. I want to live in the light. That's just, that's my point of view. And I think a lot of people in here agree with me on that. Uh, what was that scripture? That's John fourteen twenty seven. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives it to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. John 14, verse 27. So, anyway, if you guys like what I'm talking about, Check out our new membership. This is for this is for you guys that want to dive deeper with me. You know what I'm about. You hear the podcast. You understand the open mind, but you also understand I have some agreements I hold to. One of those is the Christ energy. Love, light, oneness. Forgive ourselves and others. Serve your neighbor. Meditate, pray. Live in wellness to the best of your ability, extinguish timelines that you have led yourself to based on false data, based on programming of the world, not as Christ programs you, but as the world programs you, their version of peace is not his version. And so this membership supports what we're doing here. We're doing a a Zoom meeting once a month. We've got private content in there, training videos, all kinds of free resources. We're working on building that now, and we're doing the pre-sale for $9 a month. Once it actually launches and content starts going out and all the communications pipeline launches with that later this month, 
it is going up to at least nineteen ninety nine a month, if not more. But if you get it now, you're locked in at nine bucks a month. I'm not hawking this on you, saying please give me money. I'm telling you guys, I'm going to give you a ton of value in this, and this is for the people that resonate with what I'm doing. They want to support it and they want to go deeper into these understandings, trainings, stuff directly from my book. Trainings you can't get anywhere else. They're nowhere else on the internet. You're going to get them through this. And you'll get to learn more, go deeper, challenge yourself more, and be a part of this community, a part of the team. That's what we're calling it, the team membership. You're a part of this team in a way uh, that watching a podcast or watching the little TikTok videos uh, just won't won't suffice because again, I'm going to give a lot more meat in this, uh, mainly because I have authority to, because you guys have said, Hey, I want it. And you have authority now and Hey, you can be candid. You can be open. So that this is where you get, you get even more of me and more of what I'm experiencing more of these, like today's video where you get more of my opinion, but you're going to get a lot more of it in there. So anyway, not for the not for the noobs here. This is for the people that really resonate with what I'm doing. Go check it out. And remember, guys, shadows lead to more shadows. And light leads to life. Stop feeding fear. And it takes more than an affirmation a day to make the devil go away. Step into the light fully. Find that frequency of love. And every time you experience that fear again, step into love. Only love is real. I crush everything else based in ignorance and fear. That's a line from one of my favorite musicians, MC Yogi. Absolutely love it. Step into love today. Only love is real. Fancy Pants says, blessings to you, Cub. Have an awesome day. You too. Deannon says, that was good, Cub. Thank you, guys. I love you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a beautiful day. Remember, you're a co-creator of the kingdom of God. So what you think about, what you take action on, and what you create becomes real. So make sure it's beautiful. I love you guys. Have a beautiful day. I'll see you this afternoon, 3 p.m. Central Standard Time, right here on the Cub Cooker Supernatural Podcast. Love you guys. Peace. <laughs>